I'm Jared Chandler. I'm Justin Kane. I'm Tyler Jenkins. And I'm Peter Bella. And I have a question for you. What's dark, viscous, and made in Canada? Nope. It's not maple syrup. It's oil. Today, we will be talking about a few key facts and areas in the Canadian petroleum industry. First of all, we'll start out with the location and major oil plays in Canada. Then we will transition to the history of major discoveries in the oil industry. Then we will go to oil production, coal production, and natural gas production. We will then discuss the importance of the Keystone Pipeline and the future of the oil industry in Canada. For those of you who don't know, Canada is our great neighbor to the north and it has a vast amount of petroleum supplies. Now for the locations of major sedimentary basins, first of all, there's the Western Canada Sedimentary Basin, here shown in orange. It contains approximately 57% of conventional petroleum resources. Then the Atlantic margin along the east coast contains roughly 18% of Canada's petroleum resources. In the north, the Arctic regions hold approximately 16% of Canada's resources. The eastern Canada sedimentary basin, while the oldest of the discovered basins, holds roughly 2% of the reserves. Two other locations that hold petroleum products, the Intermontane region, region holds roughly 3% of petroleum resources, but has been relatively unexplored and does not have any scheduled exploration in the future. The last region is the British Columbia coastline. Roughly 4% of resources there are there, but policies protecting the environmental sanctity of the area prevent any more exploration or production. Now for the history of the Canadian Petroleum Ministry, a few key points. The, ma the main history begins in 1850 when a discharge of oil from the rocks near Inniskillen, Ontario was discovered. An entre entrepreneur named Charles N. Tripp established the International Mining and Manufacturing Company in 1851. This company will be came to be known as the first registered oil company in North America. In 1880, 16 producing and refining oil companies combined to form Imperial Oil to compete against Standard Oil from the United States. And until 1947, Canada relied on imports for all of its hydrocarbons until the completion of the Leduc well in 1947. This well provided an estimated 317,000 barrels of oil and 9 million cubic meters of natural gas over its lifespan. Another interesting fact about the Canadian petroleum industry is the town of Petrolia. By the 1860s, the Boomtown Petroleum had been established, and from 1861 to 1897, the, most of Canada's petroleum products were produced from this location. This first field produced up to 800,000 barrels a year of sour crude oil, which is crude oil that has a high sulfur content. But by the 1870s, processes had been developed to remove the sulfur and the business greatly improved. Oil production in Canada. Canada produces 4,073.87 thousand barrels every day currently of oil. This makes Canada the fifth largest producer in the world, with the USA ranking number two in that scale. This oil is produced from conventional and non-conventional wells. Conventional wells are typically just drilling into a formation and obtaining oil that way. Non-conventional wells could be tar sands, hydraulic fracking, or several other ways to obtain the oil non-conventionally. Coal production. Canada produces 73.299 million short tons of coal every year. Canada is the 13th largest producer of coal, and this is mainly mined through strip mining. In older practices, underground mining was used fairly often, but in recent years, strip mining is what is being used. Natural gas production. Canada produces 5,128.83 billion cubic feet of natural gas per year. Canada is the fifth largest producer of natural gas. 
This is mainly produced from hydraulic fracking, 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 conventional wells, and is also produced in coal mining. All right, let's talk about the Keystone Pipeline. The Keystone Pipeline is a project proposed by TransCanada, a company based in Alberta. If completed, it will be a 2,000-mile pipeline that will connect the tar sands of Alberta to the refineries in the Gulf Coast. Portions of the pipeline have already been constructed connecting the pipeline from Steel City, Nebraska to Netherlands, Texas. As you can see, this is the proposed pipeline, and this is the existing pipeline. Many environmental organizations oppose the completion of the Keystone Pipeline, or KXL. Oil produced from the tar sands emits about 17% more greenhouse gases than oil produced from conventional drilling. The State Department has determined that the Keystone Pipeline will have little or no effect on the environment because the oil will be produced anyway. Proponents of the pipeline point to the fact that the pipeline will create 43,000 potential jobs in the U.S. alone. It will also have a large benefit on the Canadian and American economies. On November 19, 2014, the Senate voted on the pipeline but fell one vote short, needing 60 to pass but only receiving 59. TransCanada is predicted to continue pushing for the completion of the pipeline and many believe that it will eventually be built. There are three aspects important to pay attention to when looking at Canada's future. The first aspect will be the rate of production. Second is the price of oil product produced. And lastly is how Canada will transport these oil products. The graph to my right represents all the production in eastern Canada. All production on eastern Canada comes from offshore drilling, and just recently they have discovered new reserves of oil that are going to be tapped to around the 2020 area, and as you can see on the graph, the production rates will hike up, but will continue to decline as the reserves deplete. The graph closest to me represents all of Canada's oil production, and it is, regardless of what happens in eastern Canada, it will continue to rise because most of the production comes from the western side of Canada with Alberta Oil Company, and they have the largest reserve of oil sands in North America, being 13% of world reserves. The price of Canadian oil is also going to rise regardless of what happens. There has been a recent dip due to declining oil prices with events in Saudi Arabia. However, all analysts have projected the prices to rise for both crude and natural gas. However, with problems with the Keystone Pipeline being pushed back, Canada is looking into new ways to solve their infrastructure problems. Alternative methods such as shipping and trains are being used, and as of recently, in the past year, train, train usage has increased exponentially almost, as you can see in the graph, and new railways are being completed to help alleviate the problems. Some points to take home. From the history aspect, the Lulek oil well drilled in 1947 was Canada's breakthrough into the modern petroleum market. For production, Canada is the world's fifth largest producer of oil and natural gas. Canada produces this from offshore exploits, tar sands, and from the Canadian sedimentary basin. As for transportation, the Keystone Pipeline is a hopeful project for the Canadian oil industry. If completed, Canada will have a direct route from Alberta to refineries near the Gulf of Mexico. And with regards to the future, Regardless of what happens with the market, such as rising production costs, Canada will continue to grow and increase production.